fucking lazy. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I didn't end up doing it. But either way, here we go. Hey guys, and welcome to the Dark Sky Gaming Podcast. I'm Zenith Dark Sky. Today, I have two unusual guests. Uh, unusual in the sense that they weren't around last season. One of them was in the chat, but either way. Um, we have Nikolai Don Treader up here if you're watching on Twitch or YouTube. If, if you don't, uh, then know that he's here. And then we have Valley on Lightstar up there as well. Um, these guys, just to give you a background, these guys, I grew, I grew up with both in different ways. Um, Valion's my brother in real life, like blood brother, and uh, I literally had to grow up with him. Uh, God help him. And then, <laughs> then Nikolai Don Treader is one of my closest friends that I've grown up with throughout school, through different periods of school for different periods of time. One of my best friends. Um, he plays video games with me a lot on Twitch, and he's one of the mods, and so is Valion as well, on my actual Twitch channel. Remember, guys, we do stream this live, twitch.tv slash zenithdarksky, and then we re-upload it to YouTube. Either way, today's topic is all about my mom being a bitch, um, how some 13-year-old in Oregon is going to come fuck her, and how my dick is small, which is true. Anyways, welcome to the this episode of the Dark Sky Gaming Podcast. That's where the, that's where the music goes. Is that your game show music? Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, first of all, how you guys doing today? I'm doing alright. Alright, okay. Okay, what about you, Valiant? Oh, alright. Alright, hell yeah. We got a busy chat today, too, so we're going to take some questions toward the end of the uh, <laughs> of the, the, the podcast here and talk a little bit with the chat about what they think that we're going to talk about here as well. I'd like to welcome everybody in chat. Just a reminder here at the start, we don't read chat super often during the podcast unless we see something that's valuable to the conversation. Or, you know, it's the end and we take those questions. But first of all, today we're talking about gaming toxicity. Um, and it's a thing that I don't think existed a whole lot until online games. I guess, in a way, it existed when you just played couch co-op games on the N64 with your friend or even NES games. You know, you sit there and play... 15 years old, in your mom's basement, Mountain Dew, Funyuns, D&D behind you, you got your NES set up, playing some uh, Mario with your friend, and getting your shit pushed in, and then they start calling you a bitch. Um, so, I guess gaming toxicity has been a thing before online games, but I think it got worse with online games. What is your guys' experience with gaming toxicity without online games? Like, uh, I know me and Nikolai here, we didn't always have the chance to play games online until we got a little bit older. So I know, you know, we we shit-talked our friends. We'd play split-screen Call of Duty and shit and, and shit-talk each other. But um, what is your guys' experience with gaming toxicity in general, but more before the online age. Um, I mean, <clears throat> really, it's just been between friends. So, you know, it's like, um, uh, word I'm thinking of is banter. Yeah. It's more of a UK term, but um, just going back and forth with your friends, having yeah. a good time. Yeah. What about you, Valium? Uh, well,. It's actually funny you mentioned that. Um, it's like, oh boy, no, uh, he's going to have all these stories about toxicity now. <laughs> um, actually, it was a little rougher uh, growing up, uh, especially um, when I was around like uh, 7 to 10-ish, uh, really before you kind of got in and, you know, got big into the gaming thing and with your friends and whatnot. Um, uh, 
there there were some moments uh you know our cousins uh like we would play games together we had some really heated uh shit go down uh we've always been <laughs> mouthy scrappy little fuckers uh can we curse on yeah, this yeah. You okay, could, could. well, I mean, a little too late now. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, honestly, it's actually been around uh, as far as, like, uh, you know, toxicity in general, not just us. Uh, it's actually been around a little bit longer than you think. That was actually one of the things I was going to bring up later on. I'm not going to go into that now. But, um, okay. yeah, it, it, it got rough. It actually yeah. got a little rougher than you thought. Yeah. And I could, I could see how it could. Um I think there's probably a few times that me and the boys just playing Call of Duty or playing games on our separate devices, just the same place or taking turns. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's some times that we could we probably got a little hurtful to each other. Oh, but for sure. That oh yeah oh yeah there's I'm sure there's times I'm sure I remember specifically times I'm not gonna go into them but where this person I. You know, I'd say, oh, man, you fucking suck or something. And then they'd get real offended. <laughs> and then they'd fucking come after me. I was like, oh, God. Um, but that does bring me into, like, right into my first thing today. Do you think gaming toxicity is subjective? And what I mean by that is any... I'm trying to be general here in the way with the topic idea that gaming toxicity really can count any kind of shit talk toward each other on video games because to some people those things might be more offensive and to some people I don't know you know they might they you know they just blow it off and that's nothing and that's generally the way I handle a lot of that but I'm not gonna lie there's been times that certain stuff I was in a certain mood and certain stuff was said to me while playing an online game that you know hurt my feelings hurt my feelings pretty bad like i was like oh shit like all right fuck dude sorry you know um so do you guys see gaming toxicity as more of a subjective thing because you know you could make the argument that you could i could be playing call of duty right now with nikolai and he could he could be like oh your fucking mother's a slut or something and it's It's honestly up to me whether I find that offensive or not, even though it's not even about me. But at that point, it's up to me whether I take that and I get hurt or... And I'm not saying that your feelings are necessarily in your control. Sometimes people say things that you don't know why it hurts your feelings. It just does. And that's okay. But um, it's one of those things where it's like... To me... If he said that to me, I'm not. I'm not offended. I'm like. I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna be like, okay, all right, okay, and then we're gonna. I'm like, oh, look at this little fucker, this little pussy, you know. But um, then then there's certain days or things like um, just in my experience, I'll give you guys one of my experiences here to kind of kick this off. Um, uh, Rainbow Six Siege is a game I know. I'm like objectively awful at the game and I know it so sometimes because people can get real bad on that game and sometimes I'll play that game and um, it, it's not usually one of my friends or anything but like someone else on the team though that we're not partied with will be like oh man you're the worst player I've ever seen or this or that and I, I get a little upset sometimes because I'm like well fuck I'm trying dude I'm over here and I'm trying I'm not trying to be bad at the game I just am I'm just not good at it yet um, so that's kind of what I mean in the question here is gaming toxicity subjective or is it you know, it, can you consider everything just gaming toxicity? What do you guys think? I think it is subjective. Um, I mean, me and you, we, you know, we grew up, you know, if you got a problem with someone, you take it to them. Yeah. And so I, I've always had the mindset of, you know, shit people say online don't really bother me at all. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It just seems to me like this day and age, people grow up with the mindset of uh, worrying what other people think about them, so it tends to affect Mm -hmm. them more. Yeah, I understand you. I understand you. And what are you thinking, Valium? 
Um, honestly, I, I don't think it's that simple. Uh, and I know for the sake of the podcast and the episode, like, uh, we kind of have to try to keep it simple. And that's going to be, I think, a big flaw as we move through this. Yeah. Um, it's it's definitely, uh, help. yeah, it's a, it's a complicated topic for sure. But, uh... I don't think it's completely subjective. I mean, there's there's a difference between um, trash talking and toxicity, and I think that's something that uh, for anybody who's listening, and I don't think there is, but just in case anyone who's listening probably needs to know is like the you know there's a line there that trash talking is considered uh, acceptable. Um, like trash talking is you know. Uh, giving someone a hard time to put it lightly based on the merit of their skill like uh you know go home until your kda is above 1.0 fucker Uh, (laughs) as opposed to toxicity which would be like uh you know go back to your country until your kda is 1.0 or better and maybe they'll let you back in like that's a toxic statement um and and I, i think especially because the way that most people and society as a whole views toxicity especially in gaming mm-hmm. is you know it's it's meant to get a negative response out of someone or it's to create negativity and to get a response out of someone yeah. and you know that kind of feeds back into like well if you don't respond to it then how does it affect you but mm-hmm. i i think for a lot of people it's it's not quite as simple as being able to let it go because i mean i could uh, you know, um, similar example, you work at McDonald's and get bitched at all day, you know, fast food, whatever. Yeah. Um, sure, if you've got thick skin, you know, it only goes so far, but it doesn't matter whether you let it go or not, because psychologically, subconsciously, like, those things are going to weigh on you eventually. Mm-hmm. And so I think to that end, like, it's not subjective. Like, mm-hmm. there is a degree to where it piles up, but mm-hmm. uh, it's finding that line is hard to say. Yeah. And I can understand what you're saying. Um, that's that's what it kind of goes back to what I was saying a minute ago where for this, the purpose of this podcast, I've kind of generalized the term gaming toxicity, the phrase gaming toxicity, because, you know, I, I didn't know necessarily what some people would consider toxicity and what people wouldn't. Like, me and, me and Nikolai here, someone someone insulting the way we play the game, especially if it's a game we know we're good at, we, we, we're we not really going to care. And a lot of the times that's not toxic, but I think that's where the toxicity actually comes into play. When it starts talking about things that someone can't actively help or get better in the way of um, ins- just straight insulting someone just because you don't like the way they're playing the game. Like, I think that's where you can make the difference and draw the line there is gaming toxicity is where someone someone insults me directly um based on how i sound or or how i look if they know who i am or something and you know just because i'm bad at the game versus just being like get good you fucking scrub (laughs) so um i think i think what you're saying there if, if I'm understanding correctly, I think what you're saying there is there is a line, but do you think that line is subjective? Because some people might think just someone being like, get good, fucker, is uh, super toxic. And it, it's not always. Sometimes, you know, they're just saying it in a rough way, but they actually do mean, dude, get good. Like, you know, I don't want to see this guy on my team anymore. Because he's going to drag me down. And from a competitive standpoint, that's understandable. If I, if we're pro Valorant players, all of us on the same team, and Nikolai fucking goes 25-3, and three, I go 13-25-2, and two, and Valion goes, drops a 30 bomb, 5 deaths, and 2 assists, or whatever. I don't know if that math adds up, but whatever, you know. Um... But I think it's, I think kind of it's understandable if you guys are like, bro, you've got to get fucking better. You cannot play like with us competitively until you get better. I think that's understandable and I don't think that's toxic. But I think if Nikolai, (laughs) Nikolai 
we just started fucking being like, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> just because I don't play the game as good as him. I think that's where the toxicity starts. And I think that's kind of how you could draw the line there. Yeah, I definitely think there's a line between um, being toxic and then just, you know, just trash talking. talking. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you thinking about that, Valent? You kind of... Is that kind of in the ballpark of what you were getting at there? Uh, yeah. Um, basically, all I meant by that was um, there is, uh, if you're, you know, outside of gaming culture, you know, maybe they don't see it, but just kind of something for everyone to understand while they're listening to this is that uh, for, you know, the vast majority of gaming culture, there is a definable line. It's like trash talking is okay. It's mm-hmm. been okay for a very long time. It's mm-hmm. been in gaming since gaming was a thing. Mm. But, uh, you know, there, there's a line there. It's just for certain people that it's a little bit harder to find, especially if they're near to the scene. Mm. Yeah, and- I definitely think um, that the the line is different for based on person by person. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, now we're going to get in some rough waters here, but... First of all, uh, do you think that people being toxic toward other people, do you think that other defining factors of a person makes them more or less likely for toxicity? Um, Because this isn't, we we don't have stats right now, like, we can look at stats of kids bullied and stuff versus kids of a certain race or gender bullied or sexual orientation. We can look at those numbers generally, but it's harder to look at those numbers in the gaming space because no one's no one's taking a poll of all the women bullied in, online. And, I mean, they are. They do take those kinds of polls. But there's nothing official, no official numbers. So... Technically, we don't have any solid official statistics on um, does a woman get treated differently playing online video games. And I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying we don't have factual statistics yet. We just have people like on Twitter. Right now, there's a big thing on Twitter. And that's kind of why this was one of the first topic ideas I wanted to hit was... The fact that right now, a lot of women, for some reason, God knows why. I think it's because of the quarantine and the lockdown and all that shit. But God knows why a lot of women right now are being really, like a lot of videos are popping up of chicks playing a game and being like, hey, go A-site on Valorant. And someone being like, oh, it's a woman. And I do that not on the mic to them, but I do that like on stream once in a while, like, oh, a woman, (laughs) just as a joke, but then there are those same dudes, like, it'll cut to two, three minutes later in the game, those same dudes are sitting there, you know, telling her, and these aren't my views, but telling her to, you know, go to the kitchen and make them a sandwich, or you're only good for, you know, X thing. I don't want to go into that because those... And we all know what that is. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, um, is... Do you think for sure, definitely, that some of those, you know, genders, other races, or anything like that, have it rougher on online? I mean, for sure. Like, uh, I've been in plenty of Call of Duty matches where... um, someone of a different race will be in voice chat and you know depending on where they grow up and their their tone people pick up on that and then you know they'll uh not always but they definitely use that to to trash talk them Mm -hmm. or be toxic to them yeah for sure i mean we we all know i have to uh on call of duty i have to i have in-game voice chat muted at this point because of how often the end bomb is fucking dropped and i don't want to get banned for that and also that's just disrespectful anyways but 
So what do you what do you think of Valion? They do don't we don't know. Um <clears throat> uh, it's I'm not sure how I want to phrase an answer here. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, just so I can kind of, you know, get this in my head and kind of package it all into one answer so I'm not rambling. Just give me a short version of the question again so I can phrase it. Do you think that gaming toxic... There's... Do you think there's... Do you think... People of certain sexual orientation, gender, race, any of those things have more of a chance of gaming toxicity being aimed at them, and, like, is it rougher for them? <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, uh, for sure, 100%. Um, uh, like, if you actually look up scholarly articles on uh, gaming toxicity... There's a there's actually a bunch of studies. Granted, none of them are um, worldwide in scope, but we're talking like samples of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people, where uh, people of certain genders and sexual identities um, do feel targeted. Uh, now, that's to say, or that's not to say, you know, if that's 100% what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. Those studies do go into more on that, and for the most part, I mean, it is what's happening. But there, there's a little bit of uh, there's there's a gray area there that you could honestly do studies on in and of itself. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, for sure, and it's it's not as bad as it used to be. Probably, like I think I could probably say that. Um, even though I don't have any, you know, statistical information to back me up, but we're talking like 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, yeah. certainly, uh, women and bisexual, lesbian, gay, et cetera, et cetera. Like they were definitely being targeted more than other groups, uh, yeah. uh at least to some extent, because I mean, if you have a study of 3,000 people, a sample of 3,000 random people, sure, that's not the world, but that's a pretty damn large study. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and I agree, just to go ahead and throw my answer out there, I agree, I think it definitely is an issue. Um, I would say that, I would say that not everyone that's super toxic in online gaming or gaming in general I would say that not all of them are trying to be necessarily. Um, I probably speak for a very little population count when I say that, like, all three of us grew up in an area where we kind of have to learn to be more progressive because there are words and certain, like, gay slurs and stuff like that that are thrown around, especially when we were growing up, that we, you know... We didn't see them as bad. We didn't see them, like, and it's not necessarily that we didn't know they weren't an insult. We didn't know, like, how they were an insult, like the, you know, the F word. How is that an insult toward gay people? You know, we were, when we were young, we didn't understand that. We, we just used it because we thought it meant stupid. We didn't know... Right. That the word we didn't use it in the same. We didn't use the words in the same context. Exactly. We didn't. We weren't calling someone that because they were gay. We were calling someone that because that's just an ins another insult that we use for stupid. And now I'm not saying that's okay. I'm just saying that you know that's what we used it as. And then you know as we got closer and closer to progression, social progression and stuff, then we started to be like. Oh, okay. These people, you know, these these um, the the homosexual people, um, bisexual, you know, all those types of um, orientations. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, we didn't know that, you know, that was offensive to them, and we didn't know why. Cause we're like, doesn't it just mean stupid? Like, <laughs> you know, we're we're like he's stupid, so I called him, you know, and then. But then later in life, you know, we started to be like, oh, okay, so it's like the N-word or something where it's like, oh, it was used against you at some point, 
and a lot of people have used it against you, so now I understand. And um, that's, a lot, like I said, not justifying it, not saying it was okay. And I think we've all moved past that mindset at this point. Um, there, there are still words that people are trying to um, hit that level of progression where a lot of people still use certain words like even even I recently have used like the R word for mentally disabled people but for someone in a game and again it's one of those things where that's not the word I use for actually mentally disabled people I say mentally disabled but I grew up where that was an insult and sometimes when you're just force of habit and you you know it's hard to break those bad habits like that and you're playing a video game someone does something just straight stupid that you don't like and you're like oh man that's you know our word so um and that that's a word that people are getting better about as well but now that we've talked about that i'm gonna bring up the fact that um i just want Nikolai knows what I'm talking about here, and you we just recently told you about it. What do you guys think of... This is so stupid. <laughs> people doing shit like... Okay, I'm just going to read part of this article. The article is on Washington Post, but it's from The Verge. They're talking about it from The Verge. And it says, Vox own site, The Verge, recently compiled multiple accounts of players who claim to be harassed by others reenacting slavery era behavior by targeting, rounding up, and killing black characters in the massively popular and critically acclaimed game Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and then it goes on to talk about the game. Um, that's. Alright. <laughs> that's toxic shit. All right. I'm not laughing right. because I think it's funny. I'm laughing at how just over the top yeah. just hateful that is to straight want to reenact that in a video game. Um, do you think that's a super common occurrence? Um, or do you think that's just a very vocal minority of people that get together and do that kind of a thing in video games what do you what do you think in the um, i think it's uh i don't i think it's rather new i mean it's been around for sure but um i haven't played red dead redemption in years but when i did play it i never ran into anything like that <laughs> it's it's ridiculous it's a little it's a little crazy dude it's a little crazy like Cause but I do I do think that perhaps the game um, can in, can entice it, um, being as you know during that era that's what happened. Um, in the game, you can you know lasso people and drag them around with the noose. So I mean, it can I see inc incite it in people that are uh, toxic like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's very bold to say, but I think that's actually a very viable thing to say um and something i didn't even think about i don't have that on the question or anything over here i didn't think about the fact that could certain games bring that type of behavior and i'm not blaming the game that's oh, obviously no, the person definitely that's not bad. yeah that's that's a person fault but could that be like could do some games entice that type of behavior? Because now that you say that, no, people aren't probably going to do that on Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V, people are killing everybody and doing all kinds of crazy shit and on big um, community-owned servers and stuff. I don't think they're... I haven't heard of anyone doing anything like that. But Red Dead Redemption 2, yeah, you're right. Puts you in the past very, very... Not progressive time. Um, <clears throat> not that there weren't people standing up for that kind of stuff then. But does put you in a time frame where some people that already think like that are like, oh, 
now it's okay to think like that because we live in that time. So now if anyone complains, I could just be like, oh, I'm just reenacting or I'm just, you know, role playing in this scenario. And that's not good. That's not good. But that that does bring up We'll, we'll hit more on that in a second. But either way, what are you thinking about the Red Dead Redemption 2 um, situation, Valion? <laughs> uh, well, I haven't looked into it, so like, I can't really say anything about it. But uh, as far as, like, you know, if there's anything behind it, but all I can say is, God, I fucking hope not. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Oh boy, is that, what is have that we come not, to? Is that not just horrible? <laughs> it's like mind blowing, to yeah. be honest. That's that type of shit where you're like, what? You the just, fuck? you just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not something that you expect out of toxicity. You know, you 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 expect to maybe hear if someone's gonna get racist, they'll drop a racist. Yeah. Thing. But right. For a whole group of people to get together and be like. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> that's fucking... Like, I seriously hope that's overblown or that, you know, it was just like a very minor thing because if not, that just... Oh boy, uh, my, my hope for humanity was already really low. It just, <laughs> I mean, what's the uh, Simpsons meme? Stop, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> stop. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, now... Going into what Nick kind of brought up there, which is very interesting to think about. Do you think, Valion, that that type of behavior would happen in other games? I mean, I know that it could, but do you think it's more likely in Red Dead Redemption 2 because of the era and the type of gameplay and, like, what you can do with a rope on Red Dead Redemption 2 and stuff? Um, well, first I do would, you know, mention, um, being able to do something with the rope on a game, that's, uh, yeah, that's something on its own, but. <laughs> Sorry, I had something. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I do think it's actually, um, I mean, they're, not to say that there aren't other genres and subgenres of games um, that don't have toxicity, but uh, there's uh, there's an article out there, and this is just one of the probably three dozen I skimmed over before we met between last week and this week. Uh, there's one out there about an AI that went out and um, looked for uh, toxicity in particular gaming genres in their communities. And it found that uh, FPSs, uh, and granted, you know, you would need to do more studies to back this up, but it found that FPSs were the number one, um, were, the, were the largest source of gaming toxicity. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know what all parameters it had, what, you know, what things it was looking for, signs, vectors, all that shit, but um, that, that doesn't surprise me. Um, I mean, if you go and, hell, one of the things that just randomly I started with when we were talking about doing this episode was, uh, you know, what game's the most toxic? Simple Google search. And you found, like, uh, Quora threads and forum threads on Steam and Reddit and all sorts of shit. And, yeah, FPSs are up there. I mean, I don't know if they're number one, but they're definitely up there. And I do think that, to that end, certain genres probably do breed more toxicity than others. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why. I'm, I'm not a scientist. I, I, I do have some psychiatry and sociology background, but, yeah, like, that just... I don't know, man, but fucking... Apparently, you give someone rope in a game, and the first thing they think is to... Dear God in heaven... <laughs> right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, that drags us into um, something that I also wanted to talk about with this. Um, I've got some reasons here that um, hybrid.co.id, um, it's an esports website, uh, kind of brought up here for reasons why 
there would be a place for toxic behavior in video games, online video games. And I'll hit these real quick, and then we can talk about it. Competitive element. I think we can all agree we're going to trash talk on a video game. Even if we don't do it publicly, like we hit the push to talk button to tell them, we're still sitting there like, oh, this fucking bitch. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, that competitive nature in humans. I mean, even if you go watch football or baseball or anything, uh, a lot of these guys get competitive and they trash talk once in a while. And there's certain rules in place for some of that, and we'll hit on that in a minute. But either way, competitive element, anonymous, because you don't have to use your real name on the internet. So if I say that I'm game GameCuck69420, <laughs> then I can say whatever the fuck I want now. Because these guys don't know me. They don't know where I am or anything like that. Um, counterfactual thinking, uh, just to hit on this, they kind of define what they mean by some of the stuff. Uh, a psychological phenomenon where unwanted things happen, we tend to imagine the alternate. For example, if only our marksmen had attacked the Lord, we must have uh, won by now. Counterfactual thinking can have a positive impact, but it can also trigger us to blame others. So if, if we go back to that Valorant thing and... You two are like, man, you gotta you gotta get better at hitting those headshots, flicking and hitting those headshots instantly when you see the guy. And then someone goes, Yeah, you piece of shit, you fucking suck at the game. You know, and gets toxic. Now because of you two, not actually because I was bad, but now he thinks he's just dogpiling pretty much. And then a negative social culture, um, which is an interesting to think about because Especially right now, more than any time in our lives at least, people are less social than normal because they can't be. They can't physically be social. They could, but then they're an idiot either way. So <laughs> um, they either go out and get sick or they stay home play video games. They're not used to talking to people anymore. They, they get out of their positive habits. They get in this mindset where they're just playing video games every day and they get super negative about it and they don't think about it though and think to correct it and they just get more and more in the downward spiral and then they just started getting super, super toxic. Cause I think me and Nick recently versus the beginning of the lockdown versus now um, have seen more toxicity recently on video games than we had before or even at the beginning because people aren't going out, they're sitting at home, they're getting more angry, blah, blah, blah. So out of those four things, what do you guys think is the top reason? Like the majority rules, reason for why people would get toxic. Is it the negative social culture? Is it counterfactual thinking? Is it because they're anonymous? Or is it because it's competitive? Obviously, it's a mix, but which one would you think is the number one reason? And I would also wager to say there is a correct answer here, but they don't have the stats for it. But go, uh, Nikolai, you can give us what you think first. Uh, I think it's to do with uh, anonymity or that people think they're anonymous. Yeah. Um, mostly because they don't have to deal with the lashback. Yeah. Okay. But um, going back to the Washington Post that you mentioned earlier, mm. <clears throat> it mentions um, people getting swatted um, and stuff like that. You know, p you know, you're not anonymous online. If someone wants to go to the full extent, they can they can find you. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and people don't realize that, so they think they can get away with it. Um, but a lot of times, you know, people can track you down. So. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking, Valion? What uh, what of those four things would be the top one to you? I uh, I'd probably have to put it somewhere along the line of um between counterfactual thinking and like just having a negative environment uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, I actually also uh, know the, uh, 
the article you're talking about um because hybrid like they let a lot of people put up articles and a lot of them are actually pretty interesting um i think if i recall uh part of it was because uh and, and this makes sense from a psychological perspective that it being toxic allows you to um find yourself a little bit of uh victory or reward um because by you know ch channeling that negativity like being toxic saying oh well you fucking suck or blah you know whatever like not only are you shifting the blame but you're also finding like a little bit of comfort for yourself like yeah it wasn't me i did fine i i i actually you know in my head i maybe not won but i did good i did okay yeah. and uh, yeah so i think that's really where it comes from I, if i had to pick one i'd say uh the the negativity more than anything else but okay. that's not to say the other doesn't have a factor yeah um the one i would wager is the top is if we were to take a poll which one leads to more toxicity um i would say competitive and that's a it's a hot take because I know a lot of people are going to hear that and be like, Oh, this motherfucker doesn't want people to play competitive games. That's not it. But it brings us into something I hit on a second ago earlier. Football, basketball, baseball, a lot of sports and stuff like that. Have in place rules where you can't celebrate to a certain extent. And you can't trash talk to a certain extent. Or... You get fined or even fired. Is that something that they could put into video games in some way? Do you think that would be overreaching on freedom of speech and stuff like that to be able to ban someone or temporarily suspend someone's account just for shit-talking someone too hard? Or being toxic, and you know there are there are people that are reasonably toxic out there that probably should just be banned because they just don't fucking stop and they just keep going. And I think that's I think it would be fair to to do that. And that kind of makes me think if they were to put some kind of rule in place on these online video games and stuff, it would if they were to do it, I would say the best thing to do is give them a certain amount of times to be reported for that kind of behavior before they get banned. And there are ways to report people for harassment and doing that kind of stuff, offensive behavior. But I would wager they don't actually do anything to those accounts a lot of the time. I, I, I would wager they probably keep an eye on it, but they probably don't. Either that or maybe the, maybe just not enough people report those type of people. And, you know, because that might be because in their head they're like, oh, I'm not going to report this guy because, you know, in some way he'll know that I reported him because I had a problem with him or, you know, whatever it may be. Do you guys think it would be reasonable to, to ban or suspend an account for this type of behavior and or I mean or do you think cuz this is a hot button issue that got started by a certain Twitch streamer recently um do you think it would be better to just not have an in-game chat of any sort cuz we have Discord and TeamSpeak and stuff like that now um I believe Xbox tried uh, handling this a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, and in my experience, it didn't work out too well. But um, I'm reading now that they're doing new stuff about it. But <clears throat> what they would do is um, make it to where you <clears throat> couldn't send messages and uh, enter voice chats. Yeah. Um, but they all... but. You know, they didn't have a very good reporting system. So if someone, you know, spam reported you, you would get uh, it would happen limited to you on that. Regardless, right. yeah. 
and that could be that could be someone that's being toxic um just trying to get one up on you mm -hmm. see i think in a situation like that what they could implement is some type of a system that takes all of the messages that that player who reported them saw or you know at least for text chat for voice chat, it would be trickier because then there would be people like, oh, so you can report me, and it takes like a minute of our in-game conversation. I don't like that because now you're recording me when I don't right. want you to. So I think it's tricky to handle, but what are you thinking, Valiam? What would you think would be – is is there an option? Is there a way they could fight it? Or do you think it would be impeding on too many rights? Or what? What do you think about it? Um. Well, I uh, I feel like I'm gonna have um, Obi Wan Kenobi jump out of the corner and yell at me. Only Sith deal in absolutes because, <laughs> uh, really, I I feel at this point you, and I mean this may change in the future, but you. You kind of do have to go either like whole hog on the situation or kind of not at all. I mean, um, there's an article out there uh, that was talking about how Riot didn't do enough, uh, Riot Games didn't do enough at the launch of uh, Valorant to help, uh, you know, early combat toxicity. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't think they actually launched their reporting system with the when the game initially launched, or at least not in a beta. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I remember like looking in a beta and scratching my head and like, why can't I report this player? But, uh, you know, it's, it's a situation where we... God, I don't want this to get too far away from me. Um, <laughs> we, we live in a place where if you can put something online, you do. Most people do. Uh, I, I think, you know, we could all three agree here that um, social media is, um, you know, a, an addiction and is a, it's, it's an integral part of life at this point for real-time responses, you know, to news, to people doing things, to whatever. Um, so in a world where, you know, there is all this um, online presence where you can say something and people hear it or are going to hear it or are going to read it it's hard not to just completely do away with a communication system like that mm -hmm. because someone out there is going to you know know that if they have a voice chat like hey hey you fucking suck hey <laughs> go back to where you came from blah 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 mm -hmm. you know um shit like that because you know that yeah they could say it to a thousand people and maybe 999 of them don't feel it but that one person does and they've accomplished their goal they get some satisfaction out of it mm -hmm. so and you know when you multiply that by a hundred thousand because twitter facebook and all this stuff and granted that's not toxic or at least not the same kind of toxic <laughs> no it's still toxic never mind <laughs> different kind. i was about to say uh, have you seen twitter? yeah uh, that's a different beast um but it's you you kind of have to just do away with something like that because like you said we do have discord if we want to do a team chat or uh what game was it was it apex at launch that their big thing they pushed was you know pinging as opposed to yeah. you know other kinds of communication like yeah. nonverbal but informa uh nonverbal uh communication that can feed other players information that would help mm -hmm. them in a game without mm -hmm. creating some kind of like Oh well, he's fucking behind you, you piece of shit. Yeah. Um, you, you don't have to add all that. You could just say behind. Yeah. It's one word. So yeah, I uh, to keep it short um, or keep it shorter. Uh, I do think you kind of have to go either just no voice, no no um, text chat, or just not go at all. Um, because at this point, and again, it may change in the future, but at this point, it's the nature of the beast and I hate saying that because I am a very anti like we should do everything we can to knock out toxicity I don't care what your reasons are um, kind of a person but you gotta go one way or the other and that sucks so yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Um, do you think now like this is just our opinions on it um, 
I'll give you my answer at the end here. We'll start with Valley on this time. Do you think that... Do you think it's something that they should act on? Like, we've given, you know, they either go in or they don't against it. Do you think it's something they should go on? Or do they just need to leave it alone and each person handle it the best way they can in terms of either reporting or just turning off the chat or, you know, those, there's, you know, there's certain things that people could do just to restrict access to them to hurt their feelings and stuff. But, you know, do you think game companies and esports and stuff should handle it? Um, so yeah, uh, basically, to give an example, um, I think yes, first I should say yes, I do think that they should, you know, go all in on it, but to a preface to that, I've been playing a bunch of Valorant lately, as you know, and, um, I use the reporting system. Um, I, I'm one of those people, those hopeless people out there who thinks, well, the system's there, by golly, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to use it and exercise my duty to be a good community player. But it's an imperfect system, um, and not just because of bad things, but because I don't. if I play 10 Valorant matches a day, I get an AFK in at least probably four or five of those. Um, and out of those, maybe one or two of those AFKs come back, but I've already reported them. And yeah, they can see that the player came back, but you know, that still leads to like a lot of false positives that people have to wade through, um, that they have to read through to see, okay, is this person worth banning or suspending or whatnot? So I think they should. I think they should just do a complete like no communication, have it this way, but I think they should give you two options when you play. I think they should give you uh, an option do you want to play with communication or do you not? And yeah, I understand in some games, you know, players can choose to do that. They can just mute everyone and, you know, whatnot. But I mean as a, like, community whole. Um, I think you should have a an option where players just want to play with pings and, you know, maybe uh, directions that they can ping out and an option where people can just go whole hog with communication. Yeah, okay. What do you think, Nikolai? Do you think they should handle it or... Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I agree with what uh, Kagan's saying, that they should do something about it. Um, you know, with the systems that everyone has right now, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, stuff that just doesn't work. Um, and most of the time they, they miss a lot of stuff, and uh, it'll, it, they don't do anything until it gets to the extreme. Mm -hmm. Like in um, 2017... <clears throat> when someone was swatted and resulted in the death of uh, Andrew Finch. Yeah, I remember that. Um, you know, and it, it when it when it gets to that point, um, I feel like these uh, game developers and stuff should be doing more on their end to try and uh, yeah. put an end to it. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think uh, I think there's definitely a mix of things we could do. One. Is my message to anybody out there getting, you know, a large amount of toxicity aimed at them? You have some power. A little bit of power. Especially if you're on something, maybe not on console as much as PC. But if you're a PC gamer at least, you have some of the power. And what I mean by that, excuse me, is... We like like we were talking about a minute ago. We have Discord, we have TeamSpeak, we have multiple third-party apps. If you want to party with your friend and talk to them and hang out with them, but you don't want to see people getting angry and aggressive or hear people getting angry and aggressive, like Call of Duty has an option to turn off text chat in the game where you don't see it, and then you can click it to turn it back on. Um, and you can opt out of in-game voice chat, but you still hear everything else in-game, which is good. Um, so, as a as a gamer, part of your responsibility to, I guess, your own self-preservation and your own self-esteem is understanding, when I get on Call of Duty today, should 
I should I put up with you know what kind of bullshit people were throwing at me um, or should you know I just get my friend on discord with me and we hang out and play some games and shoot the shit and you know you have that option and I urge you to use that option if you're just getting shit on and that is an option for you just do it there's no reason to sit there and constantly listen to it it's one of those things like you can beat yourself up for a lot of things and some people you know when it comes to like depression bipolar stuff like that sometimes you can't help but do it but if that's not an issue of yours or oh okay if that's not an issue of yours and you're not um or even if it is and you're just not medicated or something for it or whatever then i think that you as a player need to look at your other options for communicating with people and maybe just not do that restrict it for yourself first of all two i do think gaming company you know i think it's a mix i think you could do that as a gamer as your responsibility responsibility but it's also the company's um responsibility to make sure that this kind of behavior bad behavior specifically isn't happening to their player base because if that happens a lot, like on a business side of it, if I'm on Activision and or with Infinity War or Activision, any of the Call of Duty guys, and I have 100 people every month, and that's a low number, but still, 100 people every month just stopping playing my game, and they have provided feedback to me on Twitter or or through an email survey or something saying I quit because people were toxic. It's my responsibility at that point to be like, they shouldn't feel like that. They should be able to play the game and have the same amount of fun as everybody else. So what can I do for it? And I think Modern Warfare handles it pretty well in the way that you can turn off text chat and turn off in-game chat and stuff like that, at least on PC. I do think consoles... Like, developers for consoles do need to handle certain stuff a little bit better because they don't have the option for those third-party softwares. So, maybe more online games, and there's quite a few, but maybe more online games try to um, try to make it to where you can be in team chat or party chat with your friends if you're partied up. That way you don't have to hear the rest of what everyone's dealing with. And, like I said, a lot of games already have that. And... I, Honestly, I think that's one of the best things you could do, but I also do think, at least as far as the text chat goes, they do need to be able to have some kind of a system where your text chat is constantly being recorded in a way, at least in-game, so that people should, you know, if they, if they report someone for being a dick in text chat, they can, you know, they can report them and they report any interaction between or it records any interaction between X player and defendant, you know the the one accusing them of it. Um, and I think that's really all they can do, though, to be honest with you. Um, but you know, in, in reference to the streamer that I was talking about way earlier, her um, argument was we just completely get rid of voice chat and. I don't, I don't, as long as there is no Discord or TeamSpeak on consoles, I don't think that's ever going to be a viable option because people still like to use voice chat. Um, so I think that's one of those things where if, if that was your point of view where you just want to voice chat out altogether that's fine for you because you probably use Skype and Discord or whatever, TeamSpeak. But you also have to understand as a person that consoles can't do that. There's no Discord or app on Xbox or PlayStation. As right now, maybe PS5 and Xbox Series X, but not right now, there's not. So you've only got the one voice chat option or party chat, their party systems. And those are your only options. See, you're going to use it most of the time. And you can't hate on the person for that. 
Either way, though, to move past that, um, to just go back and wrap up that portion right there, um, it's obviously, going way back, it's obviously a mix between the four things that interact with um, why someone is toxic. Competitive, they're anonymous, counterfactual thinking, and a negative social culture and environment. Um, so, <sighs> but now that we've, um, now that we've, you know, kind of had that discussion there, um, as far as toxicity and gaming and stuff goes, what do you guys, how do I phrase this? Um, What do you guys think is, what do you guys think, I guess I'll put it this way, what do you think attributes to people threatening people's lives over a video game? Like when they're like, I'm not just saying like when they tell them to kill themselves, but there was a reference, or there was a uh, paragraph or so in an article I was looking at here a second ago about how this dude, you know, he was having fun in the game with friends and stuff, and then they started acting like where, like they knew where this guy lived. Uh, I think it was the Washington Post article, actually. I don't have it up here anymore. But they were acting like, oh, we know where you live. We're going to come and kill you and blah, blah, blah. What do you think, what do you think someone's gaining out of that? Is it that reward system that Valium was talking about earlier? Like they feel a sense of reward for that or do you think they're you know just they have their friends over and they're just fucking around do you think maybe they're growing up in a bad environment or whatever like what do you think leads to that point of negativity for someone that they would threaten someone else's life over a video game over a bunch of pixels on a screen um i think that has to do with <clears throat> kind of relating to real world uh, bullying mm -hmm. um, it's a cycle people uh, get bullied enough and then they end up bullying others mm -hmm. um, so I think that uh, whenever they start doing that it has to do with um, something psychological that they're mm -hmm. dealing with what do you think but, but not always some people are just uh some people are just, you know, bad. Bad uh, people. You know, in their heart. Yeah. They got a lot of hatred. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand that. I think that's someone, uh, that's something a lot of people don't understand in the world. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people pose the argument that there aren't just bad people. And we're not going to get into the whole nurture versus nature thing. Because, you know, a lot of times it is someone was raised wrong um, or around a lot of toxicity, and so they're a bad person. But on the other side, sometimes there's something mentally wrong with the person that they become a bad person. We're not going to go into that argument or anything, but I think a lot of people don't understand that some of these people won't change, and they're just bad people at heart. Um, and that's just the way it is. There's a lot of you know, you could you could go into conversations about Hitler and Stalin and shit like. There's just bad people. Doesn't matter what brought them there; they're not coming back from it. They're bad. <laughs> they're right. just bad people. Um, and what do you think in Valion as far as what makes those people like? Are you agreeing with Nikolai as far as that goes, or what do you think in, would lead to that behavior for the most part? Well. Um... I think there's a lot of factors, and if I break up while I'm saying this, uh, the call quality has been like... Yeah, uh, same outline. Yeah, degrading a bit, so okay. if I drop off, uh, I'll try to be back. But, um, yeah, I think... Uh, um, oh, and it's not your end, Zenith, by the way, because uh, like, I've got Twitch pulled up, and it's going fine it's something to do yeah, with discord yeah. uh but uh i think 
uh, kind of like what Nikolai was saying, uh, part of it is just that whole vicious cycle thing. And I don't, you know, I know there are going to be people out there that say that that's kind of a cop out of an answer, but it's it's not, especially in um, our country, the U.S. And I, I don't want to get, uh, you know, too like nationalistic about things like that, but because uh, it's, you know, not that toxicity doesn't happen in other countries, but I do think that part of that, at least for us, is that we grew up in a society and culture that um, really encourages aggression. The U.S. is an aggressive country by nature. We we have been because you know the country basically started out getting shot at <laughs> by other countries. I mean, we you know decided we didn't like Britain very much and some other shit and said fuck that. And uh, ever since, we've just kind of been fighting, um, <laughs> you know, not to get political, but I think yeah. there's a stat out there that says something along the lines of how long we've been an actual country and how the vast majority of that time we've always been involved in some kind of conflict. So the U.S. is a is an aggressive country by nature, and so yeah. people who grew up in that country tend to be aggressive. Mm. We tend to want to push the envelope. We want yeah. to go further, and, you know, maybe nowadays it's not quite as bad i don't know i think like there's a schism there like on one side a lot of people a lot of people have gotten way more chill and on the other side they've gotten way worse but um yeah i i think a large part of that is just you grew up you know um you know getting welled on by someone else on a game or in school or wherever you, you know you might have that aggression and it just it uh it nests inside of you and it grows and I think that's a lot of what it is for people. I do think there is a portion of them that just do it because they think it's hilarious. Uh, you know, um, uh, fuck, who was it? Uh, Alfred, Batman, you know, some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a crazy mixture of things and you could read as I'm sure you two can agree, you know, when we were looking at shit for this, you could read two dozen articles and they'll give you, you know, ten different answers mm. for that kind of shit. Uh, this article says that people think it's acceptable. This article says that, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a gaming community like that. This article says that Farmville's the most toxic fucking <laughs> thing ever. Yeah throwback to when Farmville was still a thing. I don't even know if your <laughs> listeners will know that shit. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... It's like 1980, dude. It, yeah, uh, it, it's crazy. And um, I I don't have a good answer. Um, I, I know probably in a lot of my responses I've come off as wishy-washy, but, it, you know, toxicity is a complex thing to talk about. It's not a... Uh, uh, black or white, and hell, oh, yeah. we could have probably had a whole fucking season on this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't have a good answer. I think Nick is on the right path when he does say that it is part of a cycle. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's all of it, but if there is anything that, you know, uh, I could say as a solid answer is, is that aggress uh, aggression is somewhat inherent in our lizard brains and a lizard part of our brains but a lot of it is bred uh nature versus nurture however yeah. you want to rephrase that again like you said but yeah, yeah. um it's it's got to come from somewhere yeah for sure. and it's coming from around us yeah 100 percent. i agree um now at this point in the podcast if there's anybody in the chat that wants to share their feelings on toxicity or even in their experiences um we'll we'll take that um, you're more than welcome to share here. Um, while we wait for that to see if anyone's got anything for that, though, I do want to um, go back to um, just a minute ago, like Valion was saying, <clears throat> if I can remember it now when my train gets back on track here. Um, oh. Basically, toxicity is one of those things that it's not. We can't, like, this episode of the podcast is just a really good topic to start on because of how conversational it could be. And we could sit here, like he said, we could, we could go back and forth about this 
all night, long enough to record, edit down, and split this shit into the whole fucking season two. Um, Because it's not. It's not black and white. It's one of those things where we could do an episode on how the fuck do we... How can we combat this and list all the options and which ones are the better ones and stuff. And that might take two episodes alone at least. And, you know, so it's it's one of those things that it's just, it's, it's impossible, I think, to weed it out completely. And it's also one of those things that does need to have a look taken at it but you're just not gonna get rid of it completely and that sucks but you're just it's not gonna happen you're not going to and because at the end of the day you would have to take away voice chat options you would have to take away text chat options you would have to take away dm options um you would have to do even more work to make sure someone can't get your IP. It just... It goes on and on and on about all the things you would have to do to eradicate it completely. But at that point, it wouldn't even feel like you're playing an online multiplayer game. Or a game with anyone. That would take the humanity out of it in a way. And I'm not saying toxicity is humanity or it's good. Although it kind of is humanity in a way, but, um, because, because of that cycle, and I think that the cycle, the vicious cycle of toxicity in general is where you would have to start to take that issue down. You would have to start banning people immediately for getting harassed once. Not that I like that option, but I'm just giving the facts here. You'd have to ban people immediately for that. Root out any toxicity that people could encounter online. Eliminate it completely. Then people won't, you know, it's one of those things that then people wouldn't hear it as much. So maybe they won't do it as much. And then at the same time, at home, you would have to hope that people aren't getting bullied. And that's not going to happen. There's no way. Like, that's one of those things where, you know, um, getting into politics here a little bit. Um people really try to like start this war on bullying and it's not a winnable war you can reduce it but it's not a winnable war at the end of the day it's one of those things where you can try to reduce it as much as you want someone somewhere along the line is going to be a dick to you <laughs> it might be when you're older it might be when you're younger and you're getting shoved into a locker but someone's gonna be a dick it you can't it's just one of those things you could do everything in your power to reduce toxicity and it's it's not gonna go away there's gonna be people in bad moods that say negative shit and then if they get banned off a video game they're gonna take that into real life when they take that into real life they're gonna extend it to other people eventually it's gonna hit other people in the video game and you know at the end of the day if you were to continue going down that line everyone's going to be banned because eventually i've said negative shit on video games i say this shit all the time i don't tell someone to kill themselves or i'm going to kill them or anything like that but i've said negative shit on video games i think we i think it's fair to say we probably all have at least once at least called someone a dick or something on a video game and you know that doesn't make it any more right but at the same time you can't you can't get rid of that right. um and, you know, but like, he, going back to it, like he said, we could talk about this for weeks. Um, we could talk about this for a long time. And it's just, you know, it's an interesting topic, though. Um, and like he said, it's not black and white. And that's why um, I was glad to have at least three people. I was trying to get four or five for this episode, but at least three people for um, for this episode to see, you know, to, that way we don't. That way, it doesn't seem black and white. There's not just two of us here going back and forth, you know, one side, one on the other. Um, we have different walks of life and stuff here. Um, having said that, is there any, and I kind of hit on mine a little bit earlier, 
between you two here, is there any kind of, is there any moment in particular you remember getting cussed out, bullied, whatever you want to say it, on a video game that actually impacted you? Like you actually kind of took it to heart, whether it was, um, whether it was like really hard hitting or just you were like damn dude like you know you just kind of had your feelings hurt over it and you don't have to share if you're not comfortable sharing but um you know i shared a little bit of mine earlier it, do you guys have any experiences where you were affected a little bit more about it or are you guys both just kind of in the camp where you just ignore it for the most part but like you know do you guys have any stories or anything um, me personally, I've never really been affected by random people. Um, mm. If I had to say something that I've been affected by, it'd probably be um, between me and a friend. Um, I, I'm not really got an idea of the exact situation, but mm -hmm. um, me and a friend say getting a fight over a video game, you know, that would mm. affect me. Because then me and me and my friend are at bad terms, but yeah. Other than that, I've never, I don't know, I've, it's just never affected me. Yeah, and I think that's understandable. I think, um, I think having a friend, uh, get aggressive with you over a video game is gonna be a lot more hard hitting than a random person. Because now this is someone that you care for and you respect to an extent, and they're you know getting kind of they're becoming kind of a. a a dick for a minute um and i will say uh <laughs> and i don't to be fair i don't think he knew what he was doing but just specifically me and nick in particular i remember the other night we were just playing rogue company <laughs> oh man uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say his name but we were playing rogue company with one of the friends we talk about online and we both love him he's a cool dude and everything but <laughs> um he was, we, I was dead, Nick was alive, waiting for this guy to come around a corner, and our other friend that we're playing with <laughs> got so pissed, because he didn't know it was Nick, he did not know that it was Nick that was alive still, he didn't look at the name, I know that's what happened, but the friend was sitting there like, what is this dude doing, he won't get in the fight! <laughs> And I was sitting there the whole time. Oh, I didn't realize he was talking about me. <laughs> he didn't even he didn't he didn't even know it. But I don't think the other friend knew that it was him either. It was one of those situations. The name on that game is like way up in the upper right corner when you're spectating. So he didn't now fucking. That, now know. that you mentioned it, though, I, I do remember. <laughs> he he got so mad, <laughs> and. I think he noticed, though. I think he realized it was you toward the end of it because um, he started to kind of get a little bit softer with how he was yelling. Like, he was like, what is this guy doing not getting the fight and blah, blah, blah. Then as the match ended, I think he saw who it was and realized who it was. And he was like, oh, God, man. <laughs> like, he kind of, you know, did that awkward, like, trying to alleviate the issue, like, where you just kind of blow it off at that point. <laughs> But I didn't I didn't say anything the whole time because I was sitting there like, does he not know who that is? And I could tell he didn't. And like Nick said, I don't even I didn't even think Nick knew who was talking about him either. I was like, right. what's happening? I'm watching this and neither one of them is responding directly. But anyways, going back to the question, Valion, do you have a specific situation where that type of um, that type of behavior has impacted you? Whether it was detrimentally or just, you know, you got your feelings a little hurt? Oh, I mean, there's probably a few if I really think about it, but uh, kind of going what Nick was saying, what you're saying here, it, it hurts worse when it's a, when it's a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I've definitely had that situation, like, back when I first got into uh, – League and I mean I'm I'm still trash at league. Don't get me wrong. I've been playing since season two of the LCS basically. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who know what competitive league is, and I'm I'm still garbage. Like uh, I I think I've made it out of 
bronze once or twice, silver. I think maybe I hit gold-ish or somewhere. Anyway, um, but I had friends who played with me, and then they realized how bad I was. And they were real nice most of the time about it. But y you could tell, like, whenever I'd go, hey, want to go play a couple of games? And they would, you know... They, they've just gotten on for the evening. I knew that they were off work or something, so they had plenty of time, and they'd be like, actually, I've got to go do blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so they were nice about it. But what I do want to kind of um, say, though, uh, if you'll allow me, it's just there's an article in particular that I think kind of spells out some of this and how, you know, it, it ingrained in us. And I have to agree with this. Like, I think this is a large part of, especially since the 90s, how, you know, toxicity has spread. Um, or I can wait if you have any closing, you know, thoughts on this particular part. No, you're um, good to go. Okay. So, and this is kind of what influenced what I was talking about, like, you know, with me being a kid and cousins and fighting. Uh, this is an article from Vice, and I'm actually going to link it real quick. There and and uh, this is an article uh, by Jess Morissette over at Vice. How games marketing invented toxic gamer culture. How early marketing campaigns for online gaming platforms suggested toxicity isn't a bug, it's a feature. And I'm not going to read this whole thing because, God, it's pretty long if you look. But I am going to read over a couple of parts here uh, from the beginning. Um, a little trash talk is an expected part of competitive multiplayer action, and that's not a bad thing. But hate has no place here, and what's not okay is when the trash talk turns into harassment. This is Microsoft's attempt to draw a line between good-natured put-downs and more toxic forms of online interaction in a May 2019 update to its Xbox community standards. The document also helpfully outlines ex examples of acceptable and unacceptable trash talk. For instance, and this is kind of what I was covering earlier, that sucked, get good and then come back when your KD is over one, receives the official Microsoft seal of approval, but you've stepped over the line if you instead suggest you suck, get out of my country, maybe then they'll let you back in when your KD is over one. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and this is back, and this is where we kind of get into, and they go into this argument between console and PC and, you know, egos and stuff. And I just want to say to everyone out there, this isn't just gaming. There are ego competitions and everything. Uh, the comparison they make later in the articles about hot rods, how PCs are the hot rods of the gaming community, you know, compared <laughs> to normal cars or consoles. But yeah. flashback to 2002, however, in Microsoft's marketing campaign to promote Xbox Live's launch told a very different story. In one print advertisement, a photo of a disaffected young man with a controller in his hand accompanied by a caption claiming that an Xbox Live opponent wanted to meet me so he could see the face of failure. Another 2002 ad asked, does ruining someone's day make you do the dance of joy? A promotional video from the same era features a player sneering into her headset, you guys are so pathetic, you chafe my ass. So it was <laughs> in on the act too. A 2002 ad hyping the debut of PlayStation 2's online functionality encouraged players to reach out and smoke someone, while highlighting the ability to trash talk opponents as an essential feature of the new service. These ads, along with others from the era, point us toward an uncomfortable truth. Companies like Microsoft and Sony frequently marketed toxicity as a key selling point for their new online gaming platforms. This is a puzzling strategy from the vantage point of 2020, a time when toxicity is practically synonymous with online gaming and too often spills over into real-world harassment. Perhaps these campaigns were eerily prescient in anticipating the downward spiral of gaming culture. Or maybe these edgy advertisements model the exact brand of toxicity that the same companies are now struggling to curb. And it goes on into the advancement of, like, especially where online it became a big problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, Heat.net was something from, what, PC or Sega that came out for gaming, and it was a big part of it. And how Heat will save the world. There's a picture in here of the ad. Uh, or how Heat.net can create a peaceful reality through a violent cyberspace encouraging that kind of behavior there's an ad here for sega net from the dreamcast way back when you'll remember when we had a dreamcast for like a couple of years and it was glorious I still um, have <laughs> as it died uh sega net and one of the advertisements for sega was for choo choo rocket a fucking puzzle game mind you a puzzle game not an fps not a moba <laughs> and uh, i'm just going to read this bit 
It's an advertisement for Sega's Choo Choo Rocket, a puzzle game about mice evading cats by escaping on rocket ships that showcases the very worst of this toxic marketing. The ad, which hit magazines in mid-2000, depicts a player named Cat and Carnage unleashing the following diatribe on arrivals. And keep in mind, uh, to people listening, um, I'm just going to, I'm stating specifically what this person says. Anything they say is obviously not a reflection of us. But this is just for the purpose of how bad it was and for comparison, you know, this is the kind of thing that would get someone banned today. And it's not racist or anything like that. I stuck a cat in your rocket, you back-ass Tuscaloosa cracker. He's in on there chewing your mice. You probably eat mice yourself when you run out of possum, you monster truck-loving buck-tooth hillbilly. And you other two mentally challenged dopes, hang up, I won. That's the kind of fucking statement that would get you instant banned, no questions asked. Do not pass go. You're fucking IP banned. You're not just account banned. They ain't gonna let your ass on from your house in general. <laughs> like, that is some shit. And it even says this rant would almost certainly earn a ban for most reputable gaming platforms today. <laughs> but 20 years ago, Sega considered a perfectly reasonable way to sell the first online Dreamcast game to potential customers. While Microsoft and Sony never stooped quite so low in promoting their multiplayer platforms, we nevertheless see similar themes of toxicity and harassment at play in early ads. And it goes on. And that's all I'm going to read of that. I'm not, uh, it's, it is a really good article. I suggest you mm -hmm. both read it because Honestly, looking at it and, you know, having lived that part, and granted, you guys were, you know, real young kids, so to you, this would have been something you would have read, especially, and just been like, seems cool, it's an ad, it's obviously good, because, you know, you're like five or six at the time, mm -hmm. and, like, that, that creates a kind of situation where, yeah, toxicity, toxicity is certainly spread, and how we were talking about, you know, where do we find the source, yeah. I think, especially if you read that article, you know, gaming is kind of responsible for it in its own way and oh, yeah. marketing. And that's just, that's crazy that we grew up with that. And, you know, I guess it goes to tell you how good, you know, advertising is as a whole psychologically. But oh, yeah. it's, it's wild because that's something that, yeah, I recognize several of these ads from being a, you know, young teenager and like, fuck yeah, Fred Durst is in this ad about <laughs> kicking my ass on Sega Net. For the ten people who still know who Ted or Fred Durst is in the <laughs> audience, um, but yeah, like it's it's crazy. And Interesting I think that Interestingly enough, uh, Fred Durst is actually next week's guest. So no, <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> but no, I mean that that's basically it. Like you know, I don't really have a story, but I can say, well, I, I could have a story, but I think it's better to say you know this is part of why this originally happened or where this got big and why it became bigger especially like in the and I'm not going to split hairs on generations because uh, you know um, secret tip to everyone listening the whole generation argument was a thing created by media and advertising to get you to, to be divided and to sell you products there's no real such thing as millennials or Gen Z or boomers but anyway um, it's yeah, it, it created a situation for everyone, and that's just, it's wild to think about, and yeah. we're responsible for our own damnation, I yeah. guess is what I'm trying to say. I can I can agree with what you're saying there. Um, I just think it's funny how, I mean, marketing for sure probably did it. I don't think, actually, I don't think marketing is like a... Something that a lot of people look at for that type of situation, because like you said, they just think, oh yeah, it's an ad. Yeah, it's, it, you know, that's marketing. Um, but I don't think people understand how much of an impact marketing has, because like, that's the whole reason people buy engagement rings for, or rings in general to get married. That wasn't anything to like 19... Diamonds are also a lie. <laughs> okay, but... Either way, that was that wasn't like a thing to like 1910, 1920 or some shit like that, where people were like, you know, like oh, all of a sudden, hey, your your missy ain't gonna treat you right if you don't buy her a diamond ring today, or at least worth two thousand dollars or whatever. Um, and same with coffins. Coffins weren't a thing for a long time. They they were marketing. What'd you say? I could just use an old pine box. 
Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to use the box. It's almost right, like you're letting right. the body return to the world. <laughs> um, uh, no one fact-checked me on this, because um, I probably no am one. wrong, but I do remember having a conversation with a mortician assistant once uh, here a few years ago, and I'm pretty sure they said that it's technically legal to just dump a body um, to an extent. I forget how they phrased it, but yeah, you technically don't even need a box. Yeah, I don't think you would just put them in the ground. As long as... It just delays the, the, the decaying. Yeah, as long as you fucking, you know, I, the cops and, you know, ever it's illegally, they're dead. Like, it's not you just dumping a body you killed, but, <laughs> like, a person you killed. But it's, they're legally dead, family knows it and everything. I don't, I don't know. As long as it's reported. The from. Yeah, as long as it's reported and it's on, like graveyard property or your own property i don't see what the problem is you just fucking bury the shit and go on with it or you can have a funeral pyre like the vikings and that's the best way to do it <laughs> send them out on a boat flaming arrow it's done you don't got to see them ever again it's all wood it goes right back to the environment it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Uh, either way, though, um, are there, do you guys have any closing statements for today on gaming toxicity or anything like that? Anything you want to hit on maybe that we didn't? Yeah, you know, in the end, it's, um, it's up to the person, the individual. Mm -hmm. uh, me personally, you know, I get pissed at people, like in Call of Duty, for example, I get pissed at campers and whatnot, um. But I don't go out of my way to insult them. Mm -hmm. You know, I might I might call them trash and all this, but I'm not going to actually say it to them. Yeah, yeah. So it's all thinking? up to the person in the end. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. What are you saying, Valium? Oh, well, uh, I won't go in too much because I'm pretty sure most of the guests are like, "Never have this fucker on again." He talks too much. No, you're good. You're good. Um, I usually my... talk too much. Uh, I think, honestly, if we're being serious, we should just all have people wear shock collars. And every time they think about being shitty, we just send a shock to their necks. And that's why I would like to use this moment to actually pivot into an advertisement for Valion brand shock collars. You can pick yours up at the nearest Atwoods, Lowe's, Home's Depot, Walmart, nearest you. $49.99 for the basic model. It comes with a basic remote. Or you can upgrade to the $79.95 model with the Bluetooth app option that we are still developing. Has some issues. It kind of just shocks people at random, but we will get there. I promise you. It's coming out soon. So, Valion brand shock collars for your kids because they're little shits. Yeah. We suddenly just got a sponsor for the podcast. Anyways, <laughs> um, I'd like to take a second to thank you guys. For being on season two, episode one of the podcast, I really do appreciate having you guys here. Uh, it's been a blast. Um, it's you know, it's always fun in general, but it's more fun when you have you know people passionate or at least with their own opinions on stuff. So thank you guys for being here. Um, as for the viewers and listeners and stuff, we're going to have some more different guests. It's kind of going to be a rotating cast. In case you didn't listen to the season two intro episode and i understand why it's just me talking for 30 minutes but um yeah if you um listen to that or didn't listen to it we're gonna have kind of a rotating cast um there's specific ones like valion or nikolai that i might tap multiple times just because you know i like i think they have a valid will have a valid uh opinion on this certain topic or a certain number of topics and then I let them pick. Uh, we're going to have some other small streamers and stuff on here as well. Um, <clears throat> I've reached out to a couple bigger people as well and they've actually responded but you know they're bigger they've got things so we've got to work with schedules and stuff like that but those things will be fun to announce when I get the chance to. So keep up with the season of the Dark Sky Gaming Podcast. If you haven't went back and listen to season one, do that. Um, good episodes on season one, some very good ones, uh, some half-assed ones for sure. 
But um, yeah, we, we season one was pretty fun overall. Uh, something I like to do here at the end of the podcast is allow you guys to shout out any social medias for you or anyone else. I don't really care if you have a favorite creator or something. You can shout that out too, um, as long as they're not like racist or something. But uh, as long as they're not toxic, you know. But Either way, uh, we'll start with Valion. You have any socials you want to shout out or anything, or any other person's sh- socials? Uh, um, yeah. Uh, let's start with Zinc Arkan. No, I'm joking. Uh, I'd like to, uh, um, I guess, shout out social media. Um, you guys, uh, I, I don't really stream. That's that's my brother here, Zenith, because um, he's better at it and better looking. Um, <laughs> I like to cook food and not stab my hand and do things with uh, culinary. Yeah, uh, you can find me on social media under the guise of you can fucking cook. Or you might find that as you can and then fucking with a star in his place of the uh, you. There's a, there's a WordPress, there's a YouTube, there's a Twitter. I don't really post on Twitter other than when I make new posts. It's been kind of uh, sleeping because of the pandemic, but hopefully we'll have content going up soon and more stuff. Um, uh, as far as other socials or things I want to shout out, content creators, if you like podcasts and you think a lot of life sucks right now and the world is you know, on fire, uh, aside from toxicity, which is probably the most pleasant part of this uh, cactus uh, dildo we've been sitting in that is called 2020. Um, you can listen to the podcast Worst Year Ever. Um, it's also Worst Year uh, Pod. Uh, it's Robert Evans, uh, Katie Stoll, and Cody Johnston. It's really cool. But uh, yeah, that's pretty it. Pretty much it. Alrighty. What you got, Nikolai? I ain't got nothing. Alright. <laughs> um, yeah. Nik- Nikolai is my mod. He streamed before, but he doesn't have the internet capabilities to stream right now. Maybe if we have him on a later episode, if he's got his internet upgraded or anything like that, maybe uh, he might get into something later. But, um, and I'm Zenith Dark Sky. You can find me on every social media in with Zenith Dark Sky in some form. Either caps, not caps, something. I'm Zenith Dark Sky. You'll know me by the logo if you know the Twitch logo or the Dark Sky Gaming Podcast logo because it doesn't have its own at the moment. Um, but yeah, you can find me twitch.tv slash Zenith Dark Sky. You can search me on YouTube where we do re-uploads, um, occasionally very conversational content and stuff like that. Um, thank you guys again. For uh, being on the podcast. It was good having you. Thanks for having us. Sure. Had a good time. Alrighty. And uh, I'll see you guys next Friday. Um, the viewers, maybe these guys, we don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but either way, we'll see you guys next Friday on the Dark Sky Gaming Podcast. Remember, if you want to watch live, it's Fridays. The pre show starts about 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, on twitch.tv slash Zenith Dark Sky. Uh, and then it'll be on whatever podcast service you like, usually the next Saturday, or the, the Saturday following, excuse me, following that Friday. Um, but having said that, thank you guys, everybody, viewers, these guys. Um, again, remember to rate the uh, podcast, review it, all that stuff. Uh, wherever you listen to it and follow it, sub, whatever you can do to keep up with us for when the next episode goes live. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. And, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, we're still live on Twitch and everything. I just stopped the recording there. Um, I've got a piss like a Russian racehorse. All right? So right. I'll be right well. back. <laughs> um, as far as when I get back, if you guys want to stick around yeah. for a few minutes um, after we take our uh, potty break here, um, we could we could talk about how the podcast went and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys in a minute.
yes we did. We all had to piss. boomers doing did they all take a break the same time it appears so looked like they were headed to a mission yeah yeah we um we hold on i don't need to record my audio anymore so i'm gonna make it to where i don't have to hear myself anymore fat ass gamers roll out fat ass gamers roll out there you go that's perfect Hold on, guys. You won't hear me for a second. Yo! All right. <clears throat> um, mission number one, possibly number two. Jesus Christ. Uh, I do want to give a couple shout-outs there. We got uh, Meister Bagan for the follow during the podcast. Or don't, yeah, during the podcast. Thank you for that follow, brother. I appreciate it. Um, welcome to the dark side. And what is this? Giblet? Giblet? G Gibletus Jack is probably the best name I've heard in a while. Thank you um, for the follow as well. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this is kind of our post show type thing, type situation here. Um, this was you guys' first experience in Dark Sky Gaming Podcast. Would you, did you guys have a good time? Hell yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. I hated it. I hate all of you. I hope the audience fucks off. No, I'm <laughs> it was uh, it was a bunch of fun. Hell yeah. Um, in terms of well, in terms of how it went and stuff, I think it went pretty well. Um, like I said, I mean, I I enjoyed my time. I enjoyed having you guys on. Um, you talkative. That's that. Uh, it's a podcast, so obviously that's the um, that's the the kicker. <laughs> um, so I do appreciate that. Uh, appreciate you guys being talkative and stuff here. Hold on, I'm trying to uh, edit while I talk to you guys as well. <laughs> One thing um, I found interesting though was that the uh, thing about the Red Dead Redemption and the uh, <clears throat> lynching parties, basically. Um, I think that I, I didn't think about it because you know in my day to day life I don't experience much racism. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think that uh, looking back on that, that probably has a lot to do with um, the whole uh, BLM movement and everything that's going on right now. Being as how big the uh, gaming community is. Yeah, maybe because there's a lot of um. There's a lot of, uh, and you know, not to get political or anything, but there's a, there's a lot of people that are very, um, right now it's like, for some reason you have to be 100% BOM or you have to be 100% the other way. Like, there's no one out yep. there, like, gamers are that audience that a lot of them tend to be like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about the politics and stuff. Um, and you know, we could argue whether it's right or wrong not to care, you know, um, that's not what we're talking about, but, um, I think that probably is, a lot of it is, um, right now especially, it's kind of a resurgence in racism toward, um, black people specifically, uh, because of, uh, oh man, I didn't bring it up during the podcast, I was gonna bring it up, um, but, either way, uh, there, you know, I think that does have a lot to do with it at, at the moment, specifically, for sure. People, are, one, are pent up in their houses, they can't go out anywhere, can't go do and stuff and have fun, and two, there's a lot of political movements that are happening right now that are super, super big political movements, um, or social movements, or whatever you want to call them, and... I, you know, I think that's probably, you know, some of these people that have these feelings already are sitting inside and just letting those feelings stew and then they come out on the video games and stuff and they're like, oh, I hate these people now because they're skin color and blah, blah, blah. They're somehow different people even though we not made any different for some reason. Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> anyways, right. um, I, th I think that does have a lot to do with it. 
I think it really does, and I didn't I didn't think about that. But um, yeah, for sure. Um, also, something I wanted to throw out to everybody here. I don't know if anyone's fans of Rooster Teeth or anything here, but they're trying to make massive changes to their um, the way they handle their community and everything. Uh, because, you know, some stuff during the beginning of the BOM stuff came out where they weren't necessarily racist, but they had the mindset over there. Um, they, they had this phrase that they've always said on Rooster Teeth, which was, um, don't feed the trolls, which is a very, very early way to deal with st the trolls and stuff on the internet. The earliest, like, that was the first thing everyone learned to do on the internet was ignore it. But when you're a content creator and you have thousands and thousands of comments, DMs, and stuff like that telling you to kill yourself because you're not good at the game or this and that, that's insane, dude. And Jeff um, Jeff Ramsey from Rooster Teeth, uh, they have a whole podcast, off-topic episode about this. Um, and I'll, I'll see which one it is right now just so that you guys can also check this out on your own time if you ever want to. It's a very, very in-depth conversation where a bunch of the white dudes that are higher up in Rooster Teeth sit down with um, Fiona Nova. She's one of their black creators as well. Um, and they sit down and talk with her and talk about the experience of Mika Burton, which is LeVar Burton's daughter, daughter who used to work at Rooster Teeth as well. Um, she, had, she had left because of the company not handling the community properly and stuff like that because they had that mindset. Uh, you know, they they constantly were thinking to themselves, hey, just don't feed the trolls. You know, they told everyone when they started, don't feed the trolls, don't worry about it, ignore them, and blah, blah, blah. But we live in a time and place where that's not the way to handle that anymore. It's not Rooster Teeth's um, specific channel. It's Achievement Hunter specifically. I was wrong, my bad. But um, that's not the way to handle it anymore. When you see someone getting bullied online, if you ignore it, then they think they'll, there's no consequences to it. Right. So we live in a time and a place where you should absolutely handle it in some way. Ban them, punish them, do something, something. Fight for that person, you know, get in there, get dirty and fight for the person or something. Um, and that's definitely the way to handle that. Um, but, you know... Achievement Hunter was created early 2000s of YouTube, and that was, I'm going to link this in chat, and then I'll link it to you guys as well. You don't have to watch it right now. It's a long podcast episode, hour and a half or so, um, but it's, it's, Jeff Keighley broke my heart when I watched that episode there. He broke, not Jeff Keighley, Jeff Ramsey, my bad, broke my heart on that episode, because this man gets out there, he puts himself out there and says, a horrible comment that was left for him in the early days and that's what created the whole don't feed the trolls thing and the comment and i, I I'm, I'm just paraphrasing i don't remember what it was again you can go and check it out again but the comment was something like um when he got his wife uh griffin pregnant um during the early days of rooster teeth and achievement hunter one of the comments left by the community was um something like I bet she's so filled up with cum from the Rooster Teeth employees that he doesn't know whose kid it is or something like that. And that's a god-awful thing to say to somebody in real life, much less the internet. And he did the, he did the, you know, that's when he came up with the don't feed the trolls, just ignore it type thing, oh, they don't know me type thing. But that's one of those things that if you're married, and you know you might be a jealous type person or something. I know I'm certainly a jealous type person, so if someone were to say that to me on the internet... Even if I ignored it, banned him, or whatever, in my head now, I'm going to sit there and be thinking, oh, man, mate, what if that is someone I don't know or something and that they know something about her or, right. you know, like, that's going to eat at you. That kind of shit right there is going to eat at you. That right there is what breeds jealousy. And, you know, it made him – it kind of drove him to – it's one of the driving factors for why he became such a bad alcoholic for a while, and he's not anymore. Thank God. He's, I don't think he's drank in two or three years now which is good. Shout out to him for that. Um, but yeah, and then, they, you know, that he, he goes into that on that podcast episode there and talks about that was his re one of his reasons for the whole don't feed the trolls thing, just ignore it. And he told everyone else to because in his head he was like, if I can ignore it, you can too. But, you know, as he, he kind of, he cry, as he's crying in that podcast, he goes into detail about how that still affected him even though he tried to ignore it. And these are things you can't ignore. 
whether you want to or not, some people, like Nikolai here, super thick skin dude, he's not going to get affected by a lot of that stuff. But I also have a lot of friends who you could tell them they look like a bitch on the internet, and even though they can't, they know you can't see them, they're still going to get offended. People have different levels of being offended, offended and insult, insulted. And that's not cool, you know? Um, so he kind of goes into detail about that, and then, you know, he cry. He, I mean, he breaks down, dude, and I feel horrible for him because um, he breaks down about it. And it, the podcast isn't about him. It's how, you know, it's about how they're treating. But he, he went into detail to explain why they even started that motto and that policy and stuff. But um, then he goes on a long rant about how now their policy basically is if you are there to breed any kind of hate in their comments and stuff, they don't want you there. You're not a part of the community. They don't need your money. They don't need your support, blah, blah, blah. And that's the way companies online should handle that kind of thing. Like, hey, we don't do that here. You know, you can't be a place – we can't be a place for you to gather because that's essentially what Achievement Hunter was becoming now at this point was because, you know, they have Michael, super ragey dude, and he's a good dude, but super, like, that's his shtick on Achievement Hunter forever has been fucking rage, <laughs> anger, you know? And um, so he's already attracting those people that are attracted to rage and toxic behavior. It's not his fault or anything. It's It's a funny thing. It really is funny to watch, you know? But... Then on top of that, then not, you know, just ignoring comments and stuff like that starts to get people in that mindset like, oh, I can come over here and say anything I want to these fuckers and take my anger out on these guys and stuff like that. And that's not the way that's not the way to treat that. So anyways, then he goes into, you know, he goes into be like, so that's why we have that mindset. But we're not going to do that anymore because our black creators are over here getting that shit said to them about something they can't control. They don't get to pick that they're black, you know, and yeah. um also, she got, like, death threats because she, does, she doesn't like to play Grand Theft Auto with them anymore because she's bad at it. And she got, like, death threats just because she was bad at it. And be like, don't let Fiona play anymore because she's bad at the game and she's black and blah, blah, blah. And Jeff, Jeff broke down because he's sitting there like – he didn't even know she was getting death threats for that stuff because he was like, why would you get a death threat over being bad at the video? You know, he was, he was in shock. And it's just a good episode to watch either way. I'll stop talking about that now. But – I do think, going back to it, I do think that's something that is weighing heavily on everybody right now is just the fact that social movements are being made right now and stuff as well, and the people that don't agree with those things are going to take that out on other people they find on the internet, and, you know, it's just shitty. People are shitty, you know? <laughs> At the end of the day, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, my, my answer here. People are shitty. It needs to be dealt with. It's hard to deal with. That's it. <laughs> that's that's how that goes. Um, but I don't know. Do you? Uh, what do you think, Valion? You think you, we covered a lot of pretty decent stuff, though, for that episode? As as much as we could for you know hour and a half to two hour episode of a podcast about that. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, there's uh, again, yeah. The more I dug into it, like especially last week. Um, Thursday, like Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday morning. Um, the more I realized, I just kind of had to pull myself away because there's just so much once you start down mm -hmm. um, the rabbit hole. And especially, uh, it should, I think it comes up as an auto suggestion because I think that's how I ended up uh, there. But um, when you're looking up things about gaming toxicity, uh, one of the things that comes up is scholarly articles or a link saying, hey, would you like to look at these scholarly articles mm -hmm. uh, from Google search? And once you go on those, unless they're the articles that are behind uh, uh, the studies and articles that are behind paywalls, in which case, you know, fuck them. Uh, like the, the rest of them, they'll link to like all these other studies and shit. And like uh, one of the ones I was talking about earlier with the where they're talking about studies of thousands, uh, two to three thousand women about how they felt you know, if they were getting um, targeted by gaming toxicity, you mm -hmm. click on the link, and then you find this other study, and then this other, and oh my right. god. It's like, just so broad. Yeah, it just gets, it's so deep. There's so, it's, it's so much of it. it. It's not that you're just hunting the white whale. You're hunting, like, the white whale flight, like the, the pod, or mm -hmm. whatever, the whale, pods, pods or whales, I think. Yeah. Um, like you're hunting the whole damn family 
and it's just <clears throat> yeah no I mean as for a succession on like two hours ish yeah we did what we could I mean mm. yeah and at the end of the day like going back to what I said at the end of the podcast there's nothing we could do it the, the only thing we can do really is open up the discussion more for more ears to hear so that they can go okay maybe I shouldn't be as much of a dick or at least maybe I shouldn't say these things. Because admittedly, I, I don't want to be like, I don't 100% want to be the devil's advocate here for these type of people. But at the same time, there are some people out there that say those things because they hear it and they think it's okay to say. They're not bothered by it, so they say it to other people. They don't realize it's a bad thing. They don't realize they're hurting anyone's feelings. And, you know, some younger people specifically probably more. Right. But, um, you know, so it's just good to open up that conversation so that they can hear that and go, oh, wait, these are, you know, these this is hurting people's feelings. You know, they, people don't like this. Like, you know, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> like, I, I wasn't offended by it. I thought it was funny. So I said it back to somebody else, you know, and you can't hate that person for doing that at the end of the day. You know, that's not their fault. They don't, not everyone knows what's offensive to everybody else. And hell, that's part of social progression right now is some people are like, why the fuck can't I say that? Like that. Like I, I, that specific friend that me and old Nikolai played with the other day, he's uh, you know, he's in the mindset where he's like, it, you know, it, it it doesn't offend, it doesn't offend me, and and it doesn't affect me, so, you know, he says it and he uses those, uh, that vocabulary and stuff, not the worst vocabulary, but he uses you know some bad stuff sometimes, and that's one of the things is. You know, it's just because he just generally doesn't get affected. He doesn't understand that it affects other people. And that's part of the conversation is making people understand these kinds of things hurt other people's feelings. Even if it doesn't affect any of ours here, it affects, it hurts somebody's feelings. And they shouldn't have to put up with that while playing a video game and having a good time just like we don't, you know? So. See, I think, I think that has to do with um, who, who you grow up around too. Yeah, for like sure. in in us in our case, me and you, we had two two uh, black kids in our school, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then I'm not sure how many um different orientations there were, but mm. um, so we didn't really have that many people in our circle. Yeah, that it wasn't would super get diverse. offended by it. Right. <clears throat> now, whenever I moved away, um, I went to school in. Brinkley, Arkansas, and I was the only white kid in 10th grade and up. So yeah. it really changed my perspective on that a lot. Yeah, and it will. I mean, it's one of those, it, it really will. Um, it's we had a lot of Hispanic people at our school. Um, more if we if we if we got into minorities and stuff like that, we had a lot of Hispanic people at our school, and um, uh, it's also another one of those things where we grew up with a lot of. Hispanic people, I know a lot of Hispanic people off the top of my head right now that um, kids in our grade would, you know, that they played football with or this or that, they would say those things as a joke to them. Like they would say slurs or whatever as a joke to them. I'm not saying it's okay, but they would. And, um, and those Hispanic kids didn't let it bother them because they – were brought up, you know, at that point they were being brought up around kids who were just using it as a joke insult more than right. an actual insult. And they weren't brought up around anyone that actually hated them for being that skin color or anything. And so they wanted to hurt them. So to them, they're like, oh, yeah, they're just, you know, it's funny, blah, 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 ha, ha, ha. Re they go on with their day. But people don't understand in other places, they're like, you know, referencing, a, you know, a shout out over here, Zinc. Arkansas and stuff, there are places they will fucking kill you for that. And that's not cool, dude. That's not cool. And so that's that's kind of what that is. If you normalize the behavior, normalize being able to even joke and say these words and stuff like that, that gets into other people's heads where we're like, oh, that's okay to say. And so then it's so hard to, to weed out who's actually hateful and who's not and who's going to get their feelings hurt and who's not. Because they're brought up in different backgrounds and stuff. And right. see, that's that's just something people don't understand a whole lot. And um, that's that's kind of why that conversation is important to have where, you know, you, you bring that kind of stuff up and let people know. It doesn't matter if it applies to you. It doesn't matter if you're offended by it. 
because fuck your feelings. You're not the one that you're not the one that gets death threats over it. You know, you're it, it's not about you. And that's what people don't understand because everyone's like, oh, it doesn't affect me. So I don't give a shit. It doesn't affect me. You know, no, it's not about you, fucker. <laughs> it's it's about the people that it does affect. That's what's important. Anyways, get off that soapbox for a second. Yeah. Um, so it's it's good that we had the conversation, though. Um, and, that, you know, we we brought that into our podcast so that people now know, hey, if you, you know, they know that we see that kind of behavior and that a lot of people, would, we know that's bad for a lot of people. So now in our community, we might have less of it too. But also, the, again, going back to those people who think it's a joke or just raised um, raised around it being normal. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll understand now at least a little bit more like, oh, okay. Like, okay, it's hurting this guy's feelings. Like, that's why he got offended. Uh, like, he, he cried into the mic or whatever about it like you know I, I didn't understand that but now they might um they might not like we said before there are some shitty people out there who don't give a fuck <laughs> and we'll hear that podcast and we'll sit there and be like ah fuck it <laughs> right how you doing doom welcome welcome dude um oh you guys have any more things you kind of want to hit on to do with that um, here for the post show. I think I've hit on just about everything I had in mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, can't really think of anything. I okay. mean, you know, there's a there's a thousand things that come to mind when you want to talk about it, but you, then right. it all goes out the window because you form a narrative and you talk about other things. But yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's pretty good. All right, boys. Well, sounds like we got a podcast wrapped up here and the post show and stuff like that wrapped up here. Um, I'm still editing this. There we go. Over here. Uh, thank you guys again for being here. Um, I'm probably going to go head over to my Discord and I'm still going to stream the whole rest of the day because this doesn't have to be up till tomorrow on every other platform anyways. That's kind of why I do that so that I can still, you know, play games and do shit and then Saturday have all that uploaded. Um, but I'm probably going to go play some Call of Duty. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm going to go play some Call of Duty now and get yelled at by some more 13-year-olds. Hell yeah. But, uh, so if you guys want to hang out in the chat or whatever and watch for a little bit, you can. Or, Nick, if you want to play with me or whatever, you can. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty much good here. Uh, thank you guys again. Um, and, yeah, for those that don't know in the chat, that's Nikolai, Nikolai, and way over there is Valion. Um, both mods in the chat. So, yeah. Thank you guys again. Oh, uh, one What's thing up? I wanted to mention, um, how much are we getting paid for this? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs>